So tonight's film is one I'm really surprised I didn't see as a kid, as it was definitely the kind of film I watched a lot as a kid, but somehow never saw this one. This is 1985's Lady Hawk. It's uh, directed by Richard Donner and has four credited screenwriters, including Edward Karma, Michael Thomas, Tom Mankiewicz, and David Peoples. Obviously, Tom Mankiewicz, um, part of the Mankiewicz clan, he was a script doctor during this era, and David Peoples is best known for writing uh, Blade Runner and Unforgiven and 12 Monkeys. So, got a lot of people working on this. Um, it's an original story set in 13th century Europe, which you don't get a lot of uh, outside of, like, Russian epics, you know. And um, it follows a thief known as the Mouse who is escaping from a dungeon. He is played by Matthew Broderick. And Broderick is good and funny and, and works, but he also has such a, a distinct not 13th century Europe voice that it's kind of distracting. Um, I know he's a, a trained theater actor and I think um, he does great work, but he just doesn't, he feels too modern um, for something set in 13th century, most likely France, but Europe. Um, he escapes, brags about his escape, and then almost gets caught again by people from the prison that he escaped from, only to be saved by the prison's ex-captain, played by Rucker Hauer, in a role that was originally supposed to be Ru Kurt Russell. I don't know how you go from Kurt Russell to Rucker Hauer. That said, Rucker Hauer definitely feels more 13th century Europe than Kurt Russell ever could. Um, he travels with a hawk companion. You later find out when the hawk and him get injured that Rucker Hauer's character is a wolf by day, no, a wolf by night, and a human by day, and the hawk is a hawk by day, and a woman played by Michelle Pfeiffer by night. They have been cursed by the bishop who runs this um, prison uh, because they love each other, and the bishop loved Pfeiffer's character, and so he makes a deal with the devil and curses them to this eternal separation. However, there is hope because somehow they use, they have a plan to use the um, solar eclipse to both be human at the same time, which I don't quite understand, but it's fine. Um, is, it, is it about the sun or is it about the daytime? That's what I want to know. Um, to go stand in human form in front of the bishop and break the curse. So the rest of the film is them escaping from the goons trying to get them a, Matthew Broderick's character, A, back into prison, and B, once they realize what Hauer and Pfeiffer characters are doing, try to kill them as well. The bishop has sent people after them. And then the rest of the film is, you know, uh, an epic sword fight, um, bow and arrow shooting, horse riding, fantastic fantasy. Um... It's heightened by an amazing score. Uh, I know this is like one of the most hated scores of all time, I believe. It's by Andrew Powell, and it's in, um, um, produced by Alan Parsons, both of whom worked on the Alan Parsons project. And it definitely feels like a, a lost Alan Parsons project um, album. So it doesn't, it goes and it doesn't go at the same time. It goes if you think about all of the films of this era that had similar scores and thinking of all the Tangerine Dream scores. Um, it doesn't go in that, obviously, in 13th century Europe, you're not going to have, like, prog rock. Um, so if you're not an Alan Parsons Project fan or you can't wrap your head around modern prog rock over a 13th century Europe setting, death scores, you're going to hate the score. I loved it. I like how cheesy it was. I enjoyed it. Um, I'm a fan of that kind of mishmash. Which, strangely, I understand does not jive with me saying I don't get Broderick. The score I get, Broderick I don't get. Here's why. Broderick as an actor feels too modern. And you can't compensate that for the character. So the character feels too modern. The score is not part of the world. The score is always diegetic. And so um, you know that it's not really there. Is it non-diegetic? I can't remember now. Non-diegetic. So it's not really there. If you took the score away, all the same stuff would happen. The score is for you, the viewer. 
that's how I'm like wrapping my head around the fact that I, I'm okay with the score being modern and not the actor. Um, what else? Rucker Hauer is very good in this. You can see him coming off of Blade Runner and just being this this like soulful beast of a dude. I'm really into it. Um, and then obviously Pfeiffer is just stunning. Um, unfortunately, she doesn't get to do a lot with this role. It just it, it often feels like um, you know a helpless maiden type thing. She screams a lot. Uh, and, you know, seeing some of her other 80s roles where she gets to be so badass that it's kind of un unfortunate to see her sort of wasted in a, in a, such a thankless female role. Um, what else about this film? Oh, yes, it's shot by Vittorio Storaro, and he's one of the great uh, color photographers of the 70s and into the 80s. His cinematography of this era is so lush and so gorgeous and so, like, it feels um, very much uh, like it's, I'm, I'm thinking, I'm forgetting the art movement that I just had in my head. Oh, God. There's an art movement that it feels inspired by, and I'm forgetting the name of it. But um, he used his use of, of, of like, reds and, and blush pinks and, and burnt oranges and things to make you sort of feel a warm feeling the whole time is, is stunning. So um, this film has its ups and its downs. It's not the best movie, but uh, I enjoyed having it on. I don't know that I would return to it. I probably would have really loved it as a kid, I'll tell you that much. Um, that said, my favorite of these kind of films from that era, um, unless you count Labyrinth, which I don't really count, even though it's a fantasy, it's not really like this medieval kind of fantasy thing. Um, my favorite was was Ridley Scott's Legend, because there's like Tim Curry as the devil and like unicorns. Um, put a unicorn in a movie, and I'm I'm there. So this is Lady Hawk. It's available on DVD uh, from I believe. But it's also streaming until the end of September or mid-September or something like that on Filmstruck. So if you have Filmstruck, you can check it out. Um, there's a couple other of the films in this bucket that I'm going to try to watch before they expire. We also have the the uh, Robert Town um, Tarzan, so I'm looking forward to that. Oh, but if you're looking for Matthew Broderick films and you have not yet watched Torch Song Trilogy... That is also on Filmstruck, and you should watch that, because that's a fantastic film and a great Broderick performance, possibly his best. Um, so this is Lady Hawk from Richard Donner. It's no Superman. It's no lethal weapon, but it is quite fun. <laughs>